Now, with, with class example number one, we're going to look at the functions f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6, and g of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x plus 6, such that x is an element of real numbers. And so we want to determine the expressions for f of x plus g of x and f of x minus g of x. So first of all, f of x, function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6, get my equal sign in there, and I want to add my function g of x, which is x cubed minus 2x plus 6. And upon simplification, I get x cubed and x cubed, which is 2x cubed. Uh, I have negative 2x squared, which is negative 2x squared. I have negative 2x, and I have positive 6 and positive 6 for positive 12. f of g of x, we're doing the opposite. We're subtracting, so x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6, and we're adding x cubed, or sorry, we're subtracting this time, and we're subtracting x cubed minus 2x plus 6. Upon simplification, if I rewrite this, 2x squared plus 6 minus x cubed plus 2x minus 6, we're going to end up with um, and sorry, this should be x cubed here. So x cubed subtract x cubed. We have negative 2x squared. We have uh, positive 2x, and we have positive 6 subtract 6. And so here's our final function. Now, if we complete the following statements, f of x plus g of x is a sum of two functions. f and g of x can be written as f plus g of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x plus 12. f minus g of x is a difference of two functions, f and g, and it can be written as f minus g of x, and that is equal to negative 2x squared plus 2x. Let's look at this one down here. Um, f minus g of the square root of 6. And so our function, f minus g, is negative 2x squared plus 2x. And so uh, if we replace our x value with square root of 6, this is what we're left with. And negative 2 square root of 6 squared is just 6. And so negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. And uh, every time we have an x, we've got to replace this with square root. Sorry about that. So that will be square root of 6, square root of 6, square root of 6. And this will be the, the most simplified we can get because there's no perfect squares in 6. Uh, in this last example, we have a multimedia production company produces DVDs, which cost $3 per unit. The fixed cost includes the graphics are $10,000, irrespective of the number of DVDs produced. Each DVD retails for $15. And so if X is the number of units produced, answer the following in terms of X. So if we want to write the total cost as a function, C of X, uh, the number of units produced, so C of X, x is equal to uh, the number of units produced, so the fixed cost, including the graphics, are $10,000 and $3 per unit. So 3x, the cost $3 per unit plus the um, $10,000 irrespective of the number of units produced. Uh, write the revenue r of x as a function of the number of units produced, so r of x the revenue. Uh, each DVD retails for $15. So if we were to sell a DVD, however many DVDs, we would multiply by 15, so 15x. And so if we want to write the company's profit as another function, so P of x, um, P of x is going to come from, so the, the profit that the, num that the company produces is going to come from uh, how much they actually make, so 15x, and we'll have to subtract the amount that we uh, that we spend in order to make those DVDs. So 
f of x, or sorry, 15x minus 3x plus 1,000, 10,000. And uh, this is equal to um, 12x minus 10,000. Another way this can be written, so p of x, we can write this as r of x minus c of x. Um, now, if we want to determine the company's profit, if 20,000 GVDs are produced, um, this is our value of x here. So if I use this equation, and we'll call that p of x is equal to 12x minus 10,000, all we need to do is substitute our value of x with 20,000. So 12 times 20,000 minus 10,000. Uh, so 12 times 224, so 240,000. Subtract 10,000, we would have $230,000 profit.